welcome to National Geographic's three-part series, Social Rituals of the Female Species. Tonight we examine part two, the romantic rituals of the female species. Works will include an ideal husband by Oscar Wilde, Eve's Diary by Mark Twain, The Nanny Diaries by Emma McLaughlin, and Leslie Candide by Leonard Bernstein. First, we travel to 19th century England to examine what we experts refer to as the proposal. Notice our subject's indecision. Well, Tommy has proposed to me again. Tommy really does nothing but propose to me. He did it again last night in the music room while there was an elaborate trio going on. I didn't make the slightest rap I'll tell you, I hardly tell you. If I had, the music would have stopped immediately. <sighs> Musical people can be so obsessive and reasonable. They want one to be completely dumb and one is longing to be absolutely deaf. <sighs> oh, and I could tell by the gleam of his eye at luncheon that Tommy was about to propose again, but I managed to check him just in time by assuring him, oh, that I was a bimetallist. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I don't know what bimetallism means, and neither does anyone else. <sighs> Tommy is so annoying in the way he poses. If he's in it at the top of his voice, I should not mind so much, but he does it in this horrid, confidential way. When, when he proposes, he talks to one as if he were a doctor. <sighs> Do you have any allergies? Right. You wait. Right, eh? Will you marry me? Okay. Gertrude, I do wish you would tell him that once a week is quite often enough to propose to a woman, and that if he does choose to do so more often, that he should do it in a manner that attracts some form of attention. to the Middle East where we see Eve, a married woman in love, a phenomenon that has been highly debated for thousands and thousands of years by scholars all around the world. Watch closely. He loves me as well as he can, and I love him with all the strength of my passionate nature. If I ask myself why I love him, I find I do not know. Therefore, this love is not a product of reasoning and statistics, like one's love for snakes and other reptiles. I love Beth because of his singing, but I do not love Adam because of his singing. Not the more he sings, the more I do not get reconciled to it. It is not an account of his education that I love him. No. See, Adam is what you call self-educated. That means he knows a great multitude of things, but... It is not on account of his industry that I love him, nor his chivalry. At bottom, I thought him he is good and I love him for that, but if he should beat me and abuse me, I have to go on loving him. I know it. I am strong and he is handsome. And I love him for that, but... I would love him without those qualities. If he were plain, I should love him. If he were weak, I should love him. And I would slave over him and work for him. Stay at his bedside every day until I die. I guess I love him because he's mine and he's master. And as I said, his love is not a project of reasoning and statistics. It just comes. No one knows from where. It cannot explain itself. And it doesn't have to. Next, we travel to modern day.
Then, at where we see when he was voluntarily separated from her lifelong pet, Catherine. These divorcees, as we call them, can be voracious creatures. Hi! I didn't even see you there. Do you know a hitman that lawyer Gina Zuckerman recommended it didn't help at all? Turns out all the assets are in Mark's company's name. So he's getting the yacht, the apartment, and house in East Hampton. I'm only getting the one in Beverly Hills and a million dollars flat. That's it. And the judge said I have to supply complete receipts of every penny spent on child support. What am I supposed to do? Get my facials at the baby gap? Oh, and the nerve have... The judge had the nerve to tell me that I had to go back to work. Work! He has no idea, ooh, a broken nail, what it means to be a mother these days. <sighs> Anyways, I have to get going. The nanny, Consuela, has another hip replacement appointment. <sighs> it's the third one this week. I swear, it's like she does it on purpose. I really love the patience with her. <laughs> <sighs> France, where we see a woman who sells her body in exchange for jewelry and fine clothes. Conflicted, she feels guilty for her immoral actions while simultaneously uh, enjoying her material wealth.